As a kid, and even to this day, I loved this show. It was called Invader Zim and created by a guy named Jonan Vasquez. The show was created for Nickelodeon and ran from 2001 to 2002 with two seasons, although the pilot was originally greenlit back in 1999. The show was about an alien named Zim, who is sent to Earth with his robot companion Gert. Their mission is to conquer Earth, but hijinks ensues when Zim clashes with his rival, a human boy named Dib who can see right through Zim's human disguise. Not to mention Gur, who's a lovable robot of destruction. The show was created to entertain an older demographic of kids who watch Nickelodeon in the 11 to 15 year old range. This is pretty obvious because many of the episodes contain some pretty graphic material. My favorite example of this is the episode where Zim has to visit the nurse, but in order to avoid the nurse seeing his alien organs, he steals other people's organs and puts them inside his body. I don't think you will find much of this humor around in cartoons today, unfortunately. As stated previously, the show was created by comic book writer Jonan Vasquez. Vasquez has worked on a number of comics, including Johnny the Homicidal Maniac and I Feel Sick, just to name a couple. Vasquez normally worked on his projects by himself, but after being hired on for Invader Zim, he had to work with hundreds of people and because of this, he says working on it was an absolute misery. His style is very unique, and you can instantly recognize his work when you see it. Most of his characters are very thin, along with being highly geometric. Despite the fact he hated working on the show, today he's actually working on the Invader Zim comic books. The first thing you notice when watching Invader Zim is the unique dark style the show had. Often, the show had undertones of doom that made it very obvious at times. Doom. 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 My favorite episode was one called Balonis Maximus. In this episode, Dim hits Zim with a piece of baloney, which burns Zim and fuses to his skin. Zim decides to get his revenge by injecting Dib with baloney DNA, which causes Dib to slowly turn into a giant piece of baloney. It's a really funny episode, because in the end you end up seeing Zim and Dib chasing each other as giant loaves of baloney while dogs chase them down the street. So on this sculpt, I decided to leave the poly painting in, since it was a part of my process this time. For me, when sculpting these 2D characters into a 3D space, it helps to sometimes add color to them. One of the more challenging aspects of sculpting a 2D character is just that. It's a 2D character. Oftentimes, a 2D character's body will be inconsistent when viewed from different angles. Besides Zim, a good example would be Mickey Mouse. In the 2D cartoons, no matter what way Mickey was facing, you could always see his ears perfectly. There are a number of reasons why 2D animators do this. One is because when animating, you are looking for a nice silhouette. Silhouettes are important in animation because they help make it easier to see if your character is in a strong pose. Because of this, it makes it a little bit more challenging to take a 2D flat image and turn it into a three-dimensional object while not only making it look aesthetically pleasing to look at, but also resembles the character. Reference for Zim was easy enough to find, but I noticed he didn't have a consistently shaped head. From his three-quarter view, it looked as though his head was a cube that was stretched out at the bottom. And then from a head-on view, it looked like his head was pointy. I decided to stick with the cube head because I figured it might be a bit more aesthetically pleasing. Now the reason I decided to create Invader Zim was for a few reasons. One was because this was one of my favorite cartoons back in the day. The dark humor was something that I hadn't seen before, and although at times it was really creepy, it still made me laugh even to this day. The voice of Zim was played by the legendary voice actor Richard Horvitz, who voiced the characters from many of my favorite cartoons such as Daggett from The Angry Beavers, Billy and his dad from The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, and so many more. Invader Zim would not be as funny as it was without Mr. Horvitz's voice acting. Zim often has these sudden outbursts of dialogue that show how crazy he is, but the way the lines are delivered are perfect in my opinion. Laugh and frolic in your vile meats of evil. Meats of evil! <laughs> So here are the turns for this week's characters. Zim was definitely a challenge, but with some perseverance, I feel I was able to capture his likeness. It's always exciting to see a character come together the way you want. Playing with his colors was also pretty fun as well. Let me know if you guys like to see more of the texturing and coloring of the characters I make. Gur was a bit easier to make because his head is mostly consistent in the 2D cartoon. I love his dog costume, so I decided to make two versions of him. One with the hood down, so you could see his robotic face, and one with it up, so you could see the whole dog costume.
And the final pose is my favorite. It's of both Zim and Gur together standing on a base with the Urken symbol. It's fun to pose the characters together on a base because I feel like it gives the sculpture a bit more life as well as just looking a bit nicer. And now for the good stuff. I decided that this week I wanted to do a giveaway for one lucky subscriber. I 3D printed this week's sculpture of Zim and Gur, and I plan on giving it away to one of you guys. The rules are pretty simple, all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to my channel, comment below, and share the video under the hashtag BaneHorseGiveaway. If you would like some extra points, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. I'll be announcing the winner June 16th on my Twitter account, and later in a video. That's it for this week's video, I hope you guys enjoyed it, good luck with the contest, and remember to keep on creating.